What's going on guys? I am back with another video. This time we have a big one for you. We have a super heavy in Snake Eyes in-depth guide. So this might be a long video, so bear with me. Um, but there's a lot to learn, so let's get started. First thing to keep in mind is that the super heavy cards are super budget. Um, you need three Wakaoshi, three motorbike, one Soul Guy booster, and one Big Benke. Um, the whole package is around 10-ish dollars. And basically what it does is these three and these three replace something like Bonfire or Crossout Designator, or you can even just use them as two level four bodies uh, as extenders, one being a tuner with no lingering restrictions. We'll talk about that a little later, but there are restrictions, um, just not lingering restrictions. And then also no normal summon. So you don't actually have to normal summon to use these guys effectively. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that the two bricks are going to be your Soul Guy booster and your Big Benke. And we'll talk about that in depth a little bit later as well. And your main drawback is going to be that you can't start the turn with spells and traps in your grave. So um, you can't really use board breakers because they shut off your super heavy stuff. Um, you can't really use things like Imperm. Uh, that shuts off your super heavy stuff. You can't really use evenly matched. Uh, that also shuts off your super heavy stuff. So you are restricted to, uh, for certain things. You can't effectively use things like triple tactics, talents, and thrust. Um, because if you get interrupted too early and you try to use that, then you, you cut off your super heavy stuff. So you have to play very carefully uh, if you're going to try to run that stuff. I just recommend not running it at all. So um, I also wanted to show exactly the price of this deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a sample deck profile and I will bring up the price of it right alongside it. So let's see, we have our deck profile here. And actually um, I did not take the price of the bestials. So I'm going to actually replace these with what I recommend. The bestials are really good if you can or you already have them. I do recommend using them. For now, I'll go ahead and take them out. And the things that I recommend you replace them with is one Cerevis and one Parallel Exceed. And then you can either put one of your hand traps to the side or um, you can take out an effect failure or something and put something else here in the side. Uh, you have options like that. Or you can even keep the Parallel Exceed in the side for going first because it's a really good option going first. Um, it's not as good going second. That's that, and for the price, we have... So you can see, um, I really didn't care too much about uh, worrying about shipping here. You can see 36 different packages, so don't worry too much about this price. I would say it's probably gonna be more like uh, 17 to 20 bucks, but without shipping, you're looking at $125 for this entire deck. And I believe that this is the best budget deck in the entire game right now. This deck is essentially competing with the full power versions uh, at about a 95 to 100 ratio. So I wholeheartedly believe that and I might actually even have that in the in here. So yeah, let's move on to the next slide. So, how are we going to use Super Heavy Samurai like Bonfire? The way we're going to do that is because of this card right here, uh, Infernal Flame Banshee. This card is actually ridiculous. It's so, so good. It can add you uh, Snake Eyes Ash or Snake Eyes Poplar. Um, it's generic, 100% generic. It's just two level four monsters. Um, and it can add or send to the grave any pyro monster. I have never once in my life sent anything to the grave. Oh, I'm lying. I sent something to the grave one time. It came up one time in my entire life since this since this deck basically came out. So um, you'll basically never use that second effect, but the first effect to add to the hand is really, really useful. And it basically turns your super heavy package into a bunch of bonfires. Also, the other effect to banish itself from the grave 
basically never comes up as well. That one I actually haven't ever used. There's only one out of the three effects on this that are useful, but it's still an insane card. So yeah. Uh, typically what you want to do is if you have not normal summoned, you want to search Snake Eye Ash. If you have normal summoned, you want to search Poplar. I actually want to show some examples, um, one with interruption, one without, of how you can use the super heavy package like Bonfire. So I'm actually going to pull these up on a separate tab because it bugs out the PowerPoint if I do it like this. So let's go here. Um, this is going to be against Valor and Nib. So basically, this is going to be how you use your Super Heavy Samurais to extend past the first interruption and even uh, help you extend past a second interruption. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to go into our mainline combo. And if you want to see this combo, I will have a link in the description um, with an in-depth guide on how to do this combo. So we're going to basically... Uh, our Ash gets Valored, so we basically can do nothing with that at that point, except maybe link it off into something, um, but there's nothing good to link it off into. So we're going to go into our Super Heavy stuff. We're going to summon our two level fours. We're going to go into Infernal Flame Banshee, and then that allows us to add Poplar. So essentially, it's as if they never even interrupted the Ash. So... Um, your opponent could Nibiru here, but this would actually be not a good place to Nibiru. Um, you would still have follow-up and interruption on the end board. So I tried to save the Nibiru for the perfect time to, to Nib, and there is really no good time to Nib against this combination of cards. So right here, you actually have to Nib because the Ash came back and it's threatening a Flamberge. And once the Flambridge is summoned, uh, you're protected essentially for the rest of the turn from Nibiru because the Flambridge can just summon two back and then you can do plays. So we're going to get Nibiru here. And then we're going to go Original Sinful Spoils to send the Infernal Flame Banshee that we put back in the Spell and Trap Zone to uh, bring out the Oak. Oak to summon Ash. And at that point, we just completely pop off. And we end on Amblo Whale with Princess in the Grave, three level ones, uh, Flamberge, we have OSS in the Grave for follow-up, and also IP in the Grave. So if Amblo Whale gets destroyed by anything but Princess, uh, usually that means that the Princess is still in the grave and that means we can bring out the ip don't mind my what the heck what is this anyways <laughs> let's go into the next video which is going to be this one so this is going to be just essentially the one card combo uh this is going to be if you have if you do not get interrupted this is how you use the super heavy stuff like bonfire so we're going to do our super heavy stuff We're going to bring out our two level fours. And we're going to use those to Xyz into the Infernal Flame Banshee. And at that point, we're going to add Snake Eyes Ash. Because we haven't normal summoned yet, essentially at this point, we just started with Ash. So we're going to go Snake Eye Ash. Into full combo. So like I said, if you want to uh, see the in-depth video for how to do this combo, uh, that will be in the description below. But for now, we're just going to blaze through it. Um, I'll let you see it, but I won't really explain everything too much. This is the mainline combo. This is typically the combo that I try to go for no matter what opponent I'm going against. Game one, because I believe this is the most resilient combo uh, against everything. So you can see we ended here on Appaloosa, Arvada, and Amblo Whale. A side note, if you played Doolittle Chimera, you could actually end on Flamberge on top of this whole board. So keep that in mind. Uh, Doolittle Chimera essentially gives you one extra body in your full combo. 
And it would also allow you to end on a two material Appaloosa instead of a three material Appaloosa. So yeah, now let's take a look at our grave. We have Garunix, Princess, IP. We have four level ones, including the Fire King Ponyx. We have OSS for follow-up, Sunlight Wolf, and the Flamberge. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so how do we use Super Heavy Samurai like Cross Out or Called By? Um, it's not exactly like Cross Out Called By. We're not responding to the opponent's interactions with our Super Heavy cards or anything like that. What we're doing is we're essentially putting a negate on the board in order to deal with the opponent's interactions. So uh, good examples are Regulus and Rafflesia. So um, these two are basically just negates that can negate uh, different cards. Rafflesia specifically negates uh, opponent's cards, opponent's monster cards in hand or in the grave. And Regulus is an Omni negate, um, but it's a little more tricky to get out. So I'll actually show you both of these combos right now. Okay, so this is the two card mainline combo again, but this time we're going to focus on um, getting into Regulus and we're not going to be interrupted. And this is the first time I show this specific combo, I think. Uh, is it? No, it's not. No. Uh, if you want to see this combo, you can go into on onto the if you want to see this combo jesus christ you can go into the description below i will put the link there because i do explain this combo in depth so essentially if you were doing the Rafflesia combo you would just go into Rafflesia here and then you wouldn't add the regulus um but in this case we went into merrymaker into sargus to then add the regulus from our deck So now we're just going to continue to go full combo. And here, if your opponent Nibiru's, what do you still have? You still just go Sanctuary to do the Island. You go Island Pop Flamberge um, to go into the Fire King. You go Garunix. Garunix brings back the Ponix. And then you go into Princess. Princess brings something back. You go into Amblewell. So you're still immune to Nib here. Uh, even if they have, like, for example, Nib plus Valor. Um, and I do show that. I, th I think I show that in this video, in this uh, PowerPoint. I'm not sure. But in this case, we also have the Regulus. So you would also have the Regulus on top of the Amblo Wheel on that end board. Um, but now, now that we activate the Regulus and bring out one of... Now that we activate the Regulus and... Uh, bring it out. We have an Omni Negate plus the Appaloosa. So we're pretty much immune from Nibiru plus one hand trap. Um, if this Hito was Dual Little Chimera, it would probably be a little better. But for now, um, Hita is just so much better because Ash Blossom is in the format. And every time your opponent Ash Blossoms you, you just go, oh, okay, Hita. Take the Ash, go into Princess. Princess brings something back. Go into Ampla Whale. GG's. So, yeah. So, essentially, here we're going to end on Appaloosa, Ampla Whale, Regulus, and Arvada with Princess, Garunix, Hita, IP, four level ones. Uh, and a bunch of machines in the grave, including Sargus, which Sargus is, Sargus is actually a really good card against Xyz decks because if your opponent uses an Xyz card and they detach materials, you can actually just pop something on the field real quick. So that's a really good option as well. Uh, the next one is going to be Rafflesia. So let's take a look at that one. It's the exact same combo, basically, so I'm actually going to speed it up. But... The difference is we're going to go into Rafflesia instead of Sargus. So you see here we went into Rafflesia instead of the Merrymaker, which then would go into Sargus. Um, the Rafflesia will then 
protect you by being able to send Gravedigger's Trap Hole from the deck to the grave. So it does require you to run Gravedigger's Trap Hole. That's the big difference between the two packages, is Rafflesia requires you to run Gravedigger's Trap Hole. Um, but the Sargus requires you to run Regulus. Um, the Sargus is also two slots in the extra deck, but it takes the job of both of the slots in this extra deck, which is Rafflesia and Hope Harbinger. Um, because Regulus basically does the job of both. So it's your choice there. Um, I think they're about equally viable. Um, if you're running the full Super Heavy package, I prefer the Regulus package because of the, the fact that, you know, it's we run a lot of machines and stuff like that. But yeah, besides that, you would just go into your full combo. And if for some reason you ended up using your Rafflesia here to block it, one of your opponent's hand traps, you know that you you don't need it anymore because you don't you only run one Gravediggers typically. So what you could do is just link it off into the Amblo Wheel and bring back the Arvada and leave the Arvada on the field instead. So that basically makes your opponent lose a hand trap for basically nothing. Let's get back to our PowerPoint. Also keep in mind that you can also start with the super heavy stuff. Um, the issue is that the super heavy stuff loses way harder to draw. So you can see in these combos that I'm doing with more than one card, with like two cards, let's say Snake Eye Ash and Wakaushi. Um, I always start with Snake Eye Ash, and that's because Snake Eye Ash beats draw. And uh, the Snake Eye, uh, the super heavy stuff typically does not. So you want to keep that in mind anytime that you're comboing off. You typically want to start with the Snake Eye stuff because the interactions that hurt you early uh, hurt the Snake Eye stuff way less. So let's go on to the next slide. All right, so you can also use it as a, uh, you can also use the super heavy stuff as a one card generic rank four XE's engine. Um, some of the best cards that you can use are Infernal Flame Banshee. Obviously this is basically mandatory for this deck um, because it turns your super heavies into bonfire. Uh, your Trap Tricks or Flesia, I, I showed this a little earlier. Uh, this is because it's a negate. Merrymaker into Sargus, also because it's a negate. Baguska, this is for mainly Droll on Wakaushi and for Shifter. Um, Shifter decks really hurt the Snake Eye side of this deck, and they don't hurt the Super Heavy stuff as much because you have things like Baguska. Also, Tornado Dragon, this is meant for back row disruption. Um, this can take the place of your side deck backward disruption because essentially you have six he super heavy samurai cards that can get you into tornado dragon. So going second, you just basically go, oh, okay, I need back row hate. I just side in tornado dragon and now I have six in my deck. So very good card. Also cowboy for time, um, same situation. I do recommend still using um, regular back row hate and regular time cards in your deck. I don't recommend relying on the super heavy stuff because typically you're going to be relying on the super heavy stuff to get your, your Infernal Flame Banshee to get into your Snake Eye stuff or to get you into your negates. So this is really like tertiary stuff, but it is still really important to have as options. So then you have your good but not necessary cards, which is going to be Redoer, Evil Swarm, Exiton Knight, Raider's Knight, into Arc Rebellion, um, Abyss Dweller, Castell, Number 101, and Dugaris. And I'll actually show a bunch of these cards. Let's see, Ring 4 Xyz, there we go. So you have your Infernal Flame Banshee. If you want to read that, you can go ahead and read that real quick. Baguska, I'll go through the through these and you can pause them if you want to read them. Um, Rafflesia, Springen's Merrymaker, which then can be overlaid by Gigantic Champion Sargus. You have your Tornado Dragon and you have your Abyss Dweller, um, your Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy. Um, honestly, Gagaga -ga -ga is probably a little more important than Abyss Dweller right now, uh, just because there's so many options around getting past Abyss Dweller. And there's so many ways to disrupt it as well. So, yeah. Uh, then we have our stuff that's basically not super important, but it's pretty cool to, to maybe mess around with. You have your Redoer, 
um, your Exiton Knight, your Raiders Knight into Arc Rebellion. Um, you have your Dugaris, which is actually a fire, fun fact. Uh, so that can possibly be synergistic in some way. Then you have your Castell. Um, and then you have your Silent Honor Arc number 101. So all of these are really good options, but for the most part, I recommend sticking to the first seven or eight, maybe. So next we have the fact that you can use this stuff as a synchro package. So you can actually use the Super Heavy Samurai cards to get into a one card any of these synchros, as long as they're generic. So, and even some non-generic, like you can actually get into Dispatter with one uh, Super Heavy Samurai card. It has to be Motorbike because Motorbike is a level two and XL Synchro can bring it back, but yeah. So you can see here we said uh, Acro Axel Synchro into Dispatter. That's one of the options. I guess we'll go from top to bottom. So Chao Feng is a really good option. Uh, he does require one extra brick compared to the level eight Synchro package. But if you can get it off, it's very strong against certain matchups. And I'll actually show all of these cards along with the cards needed to get into them in a second. So... Yeah, you have your Denglong and Chaofeng combo, which is going to be to get you into Chaofeng for light and fire and Chaofeng for light and dark. And then you have your level eight stuff, which is going to be your Void Ogre Dragon, Draco Berserker of the Tenyi, uh, Red Dragon Archfiend cards, the best of them being Scarlight, Enig Master Packbit, uh, Cyframe Lord Omega for the hand rip, Axel Synchro into Dispatter. And then there are more options, um, but... I, I didn't want to go through all of them. Most of the rest of them are pretty irrelevant. So then you have your sevens, which is going to be Quantum Dragon, uh, FA Dawn Dragster, Wind Pegasus at Ignister. This one is pretty cool. Um, it's involved in the light dark combo. So that's pretty cool. Michael the Arc Light Sworn, Samurai Destroyer. And then your sixes, you have Coral Dragon and Stardust Charge. Your fives, you have Ib, World Chalice, and Denglong. So I'm gonna show the the cards in. I'm gonna show the cards in EDO Pro, and then and then I'll show the combo, the Denglong combo. Okay, so I don't recommend going into anything but level eight synchros, but I will show that off anyways, um, especially the Chaofeng combo because that one is actually pretty interesting, but. To get into your level fives, what you're going to do is you're going to go into, um, instead of adding Soul Gaia Booster, you're going to add your Super Heavy Samurai Soul Horns. So this is essentially going to get you into your Denglong, and then Denglong can actually add a Yang Zing monster. So that's how you get into your nines and your sevens, which is pretty cool. And then to get into your sixes... Instead of adding Soul Gaia Booster off of the uh, Big Benkei, you're going to add Soul Claw. So that's how you get into all your different options. And then I'll show you all the options here. You have Samurai Destroyer, Michael the Arc, the Arc Light Sworn, Wind Pegasus at Ignister, F.A. Dawn Dragster, Cybers Quantum Dragon, Berserker of the Tenyi, XL Synchro Stardust Dragon, Scar dragon archfiend um you can also go into some other red dragon archfiends but uh scar light is actually the best one um enig master pack bit cyframe lord omega void ogre dragon chow feng uh this starts our nine or actually this is the only nine and then bestial this batter as the only 10 which you get into using the xl if you started with motorbike so then for your fives, you have Yang Zing, uh, Denglong. You have Ib, the World Chalice. Then you have Stardust Charge Warrior and Coral Dragon as your two level sixes. All right, now I'll show you guys the Denglong combo. So the Denglong into Chaofeng combo goes like this. This is going to be the one that takes one extra brick and it gets you into Chaofeng for light and fire. So essentially, 
so far what you've done is you've added the soul horns instead of adding soul guy booster and then you're gonna go into denglong and then denglong is gonna go ahead and add your suwani um and that's gonna allow you to pendulum summon because the wakaoshi was synchro summoned off so you were able to uh place it in the pendulum zone as a pendulum and then you use that to summon your Suwani, and then that puts you into Chaofeng. And this does happen before summon 5. So this is really good for cutting off things like Nibiru and Ash Blossom. Um, if you want to cut off your opponent from being able to use those cards before you get into your Snake Eye stuff. So that's going to be this combo. And then at, towards the end, you can actually add one more, or I'm sorry, summon one more Yang Zing card from the deck. But I don't recommend running that last one because it is another brick that you would have to add. So I just wanted to show the option, but I don't recommend doing that. That's that combo. Now let's get into the next one. So this one, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Instead of adding, uh, yeah, we're going to add the soul horns. Use that to go into Denglong. And then the Denglong is going to add us instead of Suwani. We're going to add Bixie, the water one, which is a level two. And then we're going to Pendulum Summon that. And we're going to Synchro that off into Wind Pegasus at Ignister. And then we're going to use the Denglong to summon the Earth level two because it's a tuner. So now we're able to link to Synchro those two off into Chaofeng. So this is Chaofeng for light and dark. And then you have the Wind Pegasus Agnister in the grave. So this gives you one extra interruption, but it does take one extra brick. So I definitely don't recommend it. So the next way to use it that I mentioned is going to be using it as just regular two bodies uh, as, a, as an extender to get you into two extra bodies. So there are some combos where you just don't need an Xyz or a Synchro, and instead you just want the two bodies. Uh, so this is a combo that I actually have never shown on my vid on my channel and I do want to go in depth on it so um, The starting hand is going to be snake eye ash plus a, any super heavy samurai starter The end board is going to be essentially amblo whale apple uh, Hope harbinger and then in the grave you're going to have IP Garunix uh, Arvada or Kirin and princess So let's go ahead and look at that combo so it starts off the same as most combos. We're going to start off with the Snake Eye stuff. We're going to get all the way to... Basically... This point. And then at this point, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to link it off into Anima. Add back our monster. And then from there, we're going to go into Princess. Instead of going straight into Appaloosa or going into a Link 2 and then going into Appaloosa for 2, we're going to go straight into Princess uh, because we're not afraid of hand traps. In this situation, we're afraid of board breakers. We do not want our opponent to use some type of spell on their turn to just completely destroy us with one card. So that's what this combo is for. We're going to go, go ahead and go into Amblo Wheel. And then we're going to use the Super Heavy stuff to essentially just give ourselves two extra bodies. And those bodies are going to kind of sit there until we need them. So we're going to go into the Fire King stuff. And then we're going to link off the, the, the Ponyx and one of the Super Heavies into IP Mascarina. The reason for that is because we need to keep the, the Flamberge on the field in order to use it for uh, Hope Harbinger. So then at that point, we can use the Fire King Island to add our Garunix. Summon our Garunix. We're going to use Garunix to send either Kirin or Arvada. Most likely it's going to be Arvada, just, be, just in case you have more extenders. That's going to bring back the Ponyx. You're going to use those four to go into Appaloosa. And then you're going to use these two to go into Hope Harbinger. So at this point, the Appaloosa is kind of just there as an interruption. 
it's not there to negate hand traps or anything or or keep your plays from getting interrupted um, what it is is just a really strong monster that cannot be targeted for attacks because you have whole harbinger and it has three negates so this is a really really strong end board and then you could also link off this uh, Amblo Whale into Zelantis to give your Appaloosa even more battle uh, battle protection. And on top of that, this uh, board does not lose to Super Poly because none of this shares type or attribute. You can see in the grave, we have IP, Arvada, we have our level ones, we have OSS and Princess and even Sunlight Wolf. So this is a very strong combo. Um, I recommend adopting it if you're going the Rafflesia Hope Harbinger route, um, because typically against board breakers, this is what you're going to want to do. All right, let's get back into our PowerPoint. All right, let's talk about the bricks. So Super Heavy Samurai Package has two bricks that you have to run for the Snake Eyes engine, no matter what. Um, this is in order to get you into the Infernal Flame Banshee, and that's Soul Gaia Booster and Super Heavy Samurai uh, Monk Big Benkei. Soul Guy Booster is a soft brick and Big Benkei is a hard brick. Soul Guy Booster, if you have it in your hand and you have something like Wakashi or Motorbike, you still can go full combo. Um, you just would have searched the Soul Guy Booster anyways, so you're basically losing one card in economy. Also, it's an Earth, so a lot of times you want to detach it from your Xyz monsters first uh, because. You don't want your opponents to be able to to use their magnum up for example and also opening it can help play around draw but that's a very niche scenario um, because typically if you're opening something like motorbike and soul guy booster and the motorbike gets drooled after the search you can still summon your baguska um, but that's so rare that it's almost not even worth uh playing around that fact and then Big Benke, if you see this alongside one of your Super Heavy Samurai starters, it forces you to normal summon Wakaoshi because you're unable to scale it with the Wakaoshi effect. So, unfortunately, the Wakaoshi is only able to scale from the deck. So, um, that's a big problem that this card has. You can play two to mitigate that, but then you'll see it more often and it'll just really just piss you off and... You really don't want to see it. You never want to see this card ever. It's never good in any situation except being added or being scaled off of Wakaoshi. This is probably the biggest deterrent from the Super Heavy package, but it's not so bad that you can't deal with it. You can just kind of bump your deck up past 40 a little bit, and then you'll almost never see it. So let's go on to the next slide. All right, so the drawbacks of this package. The biggest drawback is probably not being able to use spells and traps early turn one or two. So that means no board breakers. Um, also, you don't really want to keep traps in your deck because typically if you have to discard it or if your opponent um, mills it from your deck or anything like that, then uh, basically you're screwed. Uh, it, and this includes Imperm because Imperm will go to your grave and then you won't be able to use your super heavy stuff. Another drawback is two bricks for six starters, which is an okay ratio. Um, the Melodious engine has a similar ratio. Um, I think it's about the, sim the same strength overall, but I think the super heavy stuff is just way more consistent. So I do like the super heavy stuff better. But two bricks for six starters is an okay ratio. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. Motorbike loses terribly to draw an Ash Blossom. Um, Wakaoshi can still put up one monster through Ash Blossom, and it can still put up two level four monsters through draw. So it's not terrible against those cards, but Motorbike absolutely is. Uh, Benke is a giant brick. We talked about that already. And also, Infernal Flame Banshee can't be protected by Kieran if your opponent is knowledgeable. Um, the reason for this is because if your opponent knows what they're doing, what they'll do is they'll destroy or they'll target your Infernal Flame Banshee on summon. And that way, if you destroy it with the Kieran, then you're not able to activate the effect. 
And if they waited to activate the effect, you would just be able to dodge any kind of negation or anything like that by destroying it with your Kieran. Um, it is still protectable by things like Cerevis, um, but typically Cerevis is not going to be in the main deck. Kieran is, so it's just more relevant. So yeah, next slide. Uh, here we have a couple of sample deck profiles. Uh, one is going to be with the Gigantic Champion Sargus package, and the other is going to be with the Rafflesia and the Hope Harbinger. Uh, if you wanted to take a look at these, copy them real quick, pause the video. Um, the main differences are going to be what I just mentioned. Uh, the bricks for the deck, so Regulus and Gravedigger's Trap Pole. Um, and then also the side deck, because since you have an Omni Negate with the Regulus, you don't necessarily need these traps right here, these three here. And then the Gravediggers is for the Rafflesia, so you need that. So I think the Regulus package gives you like one extra side deck slot. Or you could just put one extra Regulus in that slot, and that way going first, uh, you can see Regulus more consistently. So, go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, copy, pause, take a picture, screenshot, whatever you need to do. And next slide. Alright, so this is going to be the upgrade path that I feel I would take if I was trying to go full power with this deck. Um, right now, I'm really happy with this deck, and I don't see myself upgrading yet, especially because I'm... I'm a broke boy and I just can't afford to. Um, but the first thing I would do is put Raging Phoenix in um, and take Scarlight out. Scarlight is basically my replacement for, for Raging Phoenix. If I had the Raging Phoenix, I just wouldn't play Scarlight at all. So yeah, then the next thing we do is put three Diabell Star in, um, or it can be like any combination of, of three uh, Diabell Star and Wanted. So it could be like one Diabell Star, two Wanted, or it can be... Uh, actually, what I would do is two Diabell Star and one Wanted. Um, because these cards actually do synergize with the Super Heavy stuff, Wanted can return itself and OSS to the deck. And Diabell Star is a monster, so you don't necessarily have to worry about the restrictions. Um, so, yeah. That's what I would do there. And then I would take one Motorbike out. In exchange for the three so basically you would be bumping your deck up to 44 and i do believe that this is kind of a necessary precaution uh on the way unless you just want to go straight up and just do three debell star and three wanted all at the same time and in that case i would take two motorbike out and two parallel exit out and then you would still be at 44 and then you could put your three bonfire in and bring the deck down to 40. so that would be, at that point, you would just have your full power deck. You'd be able to take out all of your super heavy stuff. And yeah, there you go. That's your upgrade path. So in conclusion, I think the deck is just a really good budget option for getting into the Snake Eyes archetype. Um, you can essentially just replace three Wanted, three Bonfire, and three Diabell Star with the eight uh, super heavy samurai cards and two to three parallel exceed. Um, and I forgot to, to point that out in the Xyz section. Parallel Exceed is an incredible card for this version of the deck. Um, it essentially acts as like another Snake Eye Ash or Super Heavy Samurai Starter. So yeah. Um, the Super Heavy stuff does add the two bricks. Uh, one is a soft brick though, so it's not that bad. And um, it also adds the restriction of not being able to use spells and traps early on turn one or two. Um, but you can pretty easily mitigate that because we have so many monsters in the game right now that are just super powerful, can do a lot of things that board breakers can do. Like um, you can run things like um, the sphere mode and lava golem, stuff like that to get rid of multiple monsters your opponent controls. We don't necessarily need spells and traps. And it's not that we can't use spells and traps at all. It's that we can't use spells and traps early on turn one or two. Um, even considering that, I usually tell people that the full power version of the deck is 100. This version is a 92 to a 95. So it can really keep up with the meta. Um, I doubt it's going to win any YCSs just because the consistency isn't necessarily there. You know, you see uh, Big Benke two times and that's just basically two automatic losses. But, you know, you can get lucky and, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Let, let's put it that way. I wouldn't be surprised if the deck did win a YCS at some point. Um, just surprised people so yeah but also 
it's a great starting point for building the full power version. Like I, I showed the, uh, the upgrade path. It's super simple, uh, super linear. You can really kind of play with it a little bit the way you want. If you have certain cards, you can put them in earlier and, and skip certain steps. Like for example, Raging Phoenix, if you have Raging Phoenix, you just take Scarlight out and replace it with Raging Phoenix. So yeah, this is, this is a really good starting point for building the full power Snake Eye deck. And also it's a really good deck to, just to compete in locals or regionals or wherever you want to play, you know? It, it's it's really good. It can compete with the meta and and I think it's really slept on and underrated right now. And all it would take is just a, a really good pro that's on a tight budget that wants to to play Snake Eyes to to pick it up and do really good and and suddenly everybody's onto it. So yeah, that's going to be this video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know if I was able to convince you to play the deck. Uh, like and subscribe the video. I'm out. Peace.